Welcome to IGM Guru. IGM Guru is one of the global leading online training and certification provider for IT expert by the skilled IT gurus to help them achieve their professional goals. So let's start with, uh, so first of all, let's talk about today's agenda, right? So what we are going to learn about. So today we'll first uh, uh, talk about, I mean, on a very high level, definitely, because that we will anyway go and talk about it in detail during our training session. So first we'll talk about uh, like what is cloud computing and what is Salesforce actually, just in a, a very small intro about it. Then we'll talk quickly about multi-tenant architecture. And uh, the next, which will be important one, what are the topics that we covered at a part of this training? What will be the course duration? Uh, what certifications are available in a normal career path? And this training will help you to achieve out of those certification, what what you can you know able to do it after completing this training. Uh, we'll also try to touch base. What is the job prospects uh, once you certified or once you have uh, the knowledge in admin, as an administrator or as a developer? And then the other parts of the training, like okay, how we are going to deliver the training? What you will get uh, out of this training in terms of uh, uh, training material in terms of hands-on exercises, projects and all, we'll talk about it in that part. So let's start with quickly uh, the cloud computing, right? Uh, it, if you see this diagram, um, so in early, uh, I will say uh, in the mid of 20th century, right? So there, there's an era of mainframe. You will still heard there are some systems, mostly the government systems, are still on mainframe. Uh, the and at that time, this era was mainframe. Of course, this is a one of the most robust uh, system even today as well. But the downside of this system was the cost, cost of implementation, and the user interactions, user interface. So, for implementing a mainframe in a nowadays, it's a million or more than million. Uh, dollar you know in cost implementation on top of it uh, it's not very user friendly for the end user also because of this budget right a uh, very few only the large scale enterprises were you know able to implement the mainframe where they have a, a huge IT budget okay but for the small scale industry and the mid sized industries they were struggling at that time they were not able to implement mainframe. And also the time uh, taking, the duration for a project implementation was in years, not in a month or so. So then slowly this entire technology uh, landscape shifted from mainframe to client server architecture where basically the Java, .NET, these types of language, you know, uh, arose and, uh, you know, came into existence. And it was a boom in the IT. So, you know, first of all, all uh, mid-sized companies also, and of course, for the large implementation, companies also started coming in Java world. Primarily, the reason was like, you know, first, of course, the cost uh, is now less as compared to mainframe implementation. Uh, also, uh, the mainframe was, you know, controlled by some one or two companies, right? The language, right? The mainframe language is owned by IBM. So it's a huge dependency on IBM actually earlier. Now it's an open source. Java is an open source kind of platform where anyone can go and develop that application, right? Um, so the technology shifted from mainframe to client server architecture where you need one server uh, to basically uh, take the request from the end user and then send that request to database. Then it will again come back to your browser or your application and then you're able to see the data. So the question was then why it's the need of cloud computing came uh, if client server architecture uh, was basically uh, playing or uh, doing very good. So as I said, it's a comparison, right? It as compared, it's compared to mainframe client server architecture uh, was a very boom in the market. However, it, it has some downside. So first of all, 
the implementation point of view right which is still uh, for the client server architecture or client server project it's within a years it cannot be implemented in a month right most of the projects Secondly, the problem was, I mean, so you also encountered early days, right? Whenever you are reaching out to any office, any government office or bank, they said the server is down right now. They can't do operate any business anymore for now, unless and until some technician came and fixed that, uh, that problem in the server. Then other problem was with this architecture that uh, for a client, again, the cost is as compared to mainframe it was uh, less but it's still on a higher side why because they need a separate team for server they need a you know separate team to maintain the server firewall and everything to set up then you need a database then you need a database administrator architecture and then finally you need a front-end application developer being a java or dot so still I'm just giving you a very high level, right? In, to maintain client server architecture, you need three teams, three different teams. Three different uh, dependencies are there. Again, implementation times was uh, again in a year because most of the client server projects follows waterfall methodology. So it's a still a problem for small scale industry because they don't have the budget that much, first of all. And uh, for the mid-sized companies, some of them able to survive some of them not so they were still doing everything you know local in their excel sheet or other other way to or maybe on the paper they were doing the business so that's the reason uh, uh, because the tools if you're seeing right the sap sibyl oracle this was all also again the cost your tool right so it's for a mid-size company it's very difficult to implement so they were other, uh, no option other than handling it all the request manually on paper or maybe through Excel seed or what documents. And that's the basically uh, the need came in the market that can we not have a uh, something which is basically easy, just a plug and play on demand. Means I need something, I will go and you know use it and and I will pay only for the ad duration where I need it when I need it. Okay, and what amount of I, I want it exactly, I will use that amount of you know, the license or the server, anything, and then I will pay accordingly. And that's the basically uh, that particular demand came into existence as a cloud computing. So it gave a new era to the entire technology and it gave a hope to all small scale and mid size and even for the large scale industries that you can cut down your IT cost by just, you know, everything is set up by these vendors being Salesforce, Google, eBay or anyone. So they will, they will you know, give up, uh, set up all those things for you. You have to just come and use it and you have to pay at the means based on your uses right so that give a hope and you know the small scale industry and everything is started coming to cloud computing even nowadays you know it's give a flexibility when a small scale industries which has uh, let's say the annual budget is in let's say in thousands or in a million also they can easily come and you know start implementing or automate their entire it process all because of cloud computing so cloud computing is nothing but a platform you can say that is on demand and uh, it will give you the so inbuilt solutions to it may being as an infrastructure so within the cloud we have like a SaaS, PaaS and as like which is PaaS is platform as a service SaaS is a software as a service and as is infrastructure as a service so these three basic uh, classification under the cloud computing now coming to Salesforce, Salesforce is now earlier, um, Salesforce uh, started uh, this as a basically launched this application as a CRM first of all in, in 1999. Uh, earlier, yes, uh, it has a very limited features because as I said, it just uh, act as a customer relationship management tool where they have a limited features related to sales cloud and service cloud. So Salesforce launched with the two different clouds, Sales Cloud and Service Cloud, and they have a very limited feature considering uh, to hit the market of small scale industry and mid-size. That's their basically goal to first get that client. 
because small scale earlier they don't have any IT uh, technology available, so it's a very easy for Salesforce to capture those clients. And for the mid size also they were struggling. Somehow some companies are able to, were able to maintain, some companies were not able to maintain because of the cost. So those were you know easily coming to Salesforce and also because. They have a very simple business process and that is why Salesforce launched not with a very sophisticated right now which we are seeing those phone features earlier it was not there it was just a simple feature but that suffice for the uh, those small scale and mid-sized companies at, at that time with a low cost so it was uh, I mean hosted uh, in 1999 and of course if you are aware of it, it it's a both of uh, uh, basically it was launched by Mark Benioff and Parker Harris and they are basically the employees of Oracle actually so they left Oracle and uh, basically you know, launched Salesforce uh, so what is Salesforce earlier they started as a software as a service as a SaaS okay and in that CRM tool you can just implement the uh, all the sales uh, related to just maintaining the relationship with uh, customer and uh, and then we have a service cloud where you can you know address the grievances of a client okay so that service launched as a software as a service where you have to pay some price for a particular model and uh, just you can use it so it's readily easily available so moment they will just procure a license that or or that uh, in, that uh, software is easy easy to use but now salesforce not just evolved as a saas but also as a pass means you can come and build your entire application on Salesforce platform. So nowadays Salesforce also offered as a platform as a service, not as a software as a service. So it is basically doing both. Now you can entire enterprise solutions on a large scale solutions also you can host on Salesforce platform. Okay. So that's the uh, little bit typical journey of Salesforce and now we are seeing Salesforce as a whole as I said it's a platform uh, uh, as a service now where all big companies mid-sized companies and small companies are coming on Salesforce platform and you can develop your entire uh, lead to cash transformation or you know the other uh, services cloud nowadays <laughs> If you see the horizon of Salesforce, uh, every industry is now Salesforce has started targeting being a healthcare, being a commerce cloud, or and you will also have the different different clouds. So earlier it was just sales cloud and service cloud. Now in the market, marketing cloud, commerce cloud, finance cloud, health cloud, like that there are other clouds as well in the market. And the primary reason is to hit all the different industries. So that all industries will feel comfortable to migrate their solution on Salesforce platform. Okay. Now we'll just give you a highlight about multi-tenant. Definitely, we will talk about that in a very in a in a detailed manner during the training part. Uh, we'll just let you know that what is multi-tenant architecture for from the Salesforce standpoint. So if you see, I mean, because this word you will heard multiple times, right? That Salesforce is hosted on a multi-tenant architecture. And just to let you know that multi-tenant architecture in a simple language, if I will tell you that a given resources is being shared by multiple clients, okay? Multiple clients or multiple instances, I will say. So each instances is belong to a one client or separate client. So if you see this diagram, one I have, uh, or maybe from the Salesforce standpoint, this is one application server and this is the database layer. But with that application layer and database layer is being shared by multiple clients, right? Which means at a given point of time, but each instance has its own boundary, which means definitely one client cannot see the other instance data or any other instance applications anything like that so each instance has its own boundary but the outer cell is one single server so in that case uh, again salesforce is giving you this server and that so you don't have to come and configure you know database uh, or the server or the front end 
behind the scene even Salesforce is also running as a client server architecture only. Okay, but however, as a cloud computing, what Salesforce give, did that Salesforce developed itself and give it to you that you don't have to design anything. You have to just come and use the instance. We will go and talk about much detail during the training. Basically, how this request is coming from one one application layer to database layer. How Salesforce is maintaining the integrity that that and plus privacy that instance one will cannot hold the instance B information. How it will resolve the server down problem, right? Every time, as I said, during the client server uh, era, we encountered such types of problem that you know application is down, server is down. But nowadays, you will heard very very little thing. That case, this this system is down. Even though nowadays the number of users are huge, right? Uh, the data data is huge. But regardless, my system is working perfectly fine, all because of this uh, architecture. And definitely, we'll talk about all those points. Means how basically this will help in terms of Salesforce or any multi-tenant architecture. But just to give you a high-level idea. That this entire this is also behind the scene is nothing but a client server architecture. Here is the end user, which is basically through UI sending some request. That request will go to your application suite instances. Let's say you are logged in in instance A, and then that data will come to. I mean that request will go goes to database layer, and then you will get the data. And again, it will go to instance A, and finally here the user will see the output. So on a nutshell. Um, uh, multiple users will start coming and using, you know, at a given point of time. If let's say within an instance, say all hundred users can log in at a single point of time. If you have hundred licenses, at the same time, however, it will not affect the other instances B and C or so on and so forth. So we will talk about that in detail, right? I mean, uh, during the training, uh, actually, how basically Salesforce controls that. And what Salesforce is put that uh, in a limitation so that one cannot affect the other instance. Okay, so uh, now the next thing uh, from the Salesforce standpoint, if I will go deep dive into it, right? So since we are saying that, uh, uh, and we always say that, okay, I want to learn admin plus development, thing, right? So just give you the idea, I mean, how administrative part plus development part, so that is your here is a declarative part, which is plus programmatically, this is nothing but your developer, and this is nothing but for your administrator. So how these two things will help to create the entire application. And if I will divide it into basic building block of that particular application, so if you see the three layers, first is as a user interface layer, then here your all business logic will be run, and finally that business logic request will go to the data model. So entire application is divided into three layers, and each layer has some part in the developer and some part as an administrator. So I just wanted to give you a high level again the idea so that you can understand that administrator and developer can coexist can work parallelly on the each stage also if you are a developer plus administrator you can also play the role of developer as well as programmer at the same time so coming to user interface so here uh, basically as a as administrator how you can control the user interface by creating an application Lightning application, tab, page layouts, record types. And definitely uh, when we will do the training, we will do it in the lightning mode. Okay, We will not do it nowadays. So if you are aware of it earlier, um, uh, Salesforce has two modes. One is a classic mode, another one is a lightning mode. So lightning mode is the latest one. Uh, classic was the older version. It's just that the interface. So definitely we will do the training in the latest lightning uh, model. Okay. So there, as a user, as an admin from the user interface, what I can do is similarly here in this uh, developer standpoint, means you can go and create visual post page, post.com sites, and other part. Now coming to business logic, as an admin, you can go and write workflow, validation rule, assignment rules, plus nowadays process builder is there. 
and through the uh, developer you can go and write apex class uh, controllers and uh, then web service apis coming to data model part uh, data model uh, again uh, through as an admin you can go and create objects fields and relationships programmatically also you can go and create uh, i mean uh, uh, this data type fields relationships again but through metadata api and web service api Using metadata API, you can go and programmatically create objects, fields, relationships, all those things. Now, if I will, if I will divide, which one will be the better? Definitely, we will talk about again during the training session. I mean, it's a not a straightforward call, right? Of which one will be the best approach? Again, it's a given business scenario. What's client require requirement? What is the data size of that object? Accordingly, we have to take a call. So, definitely during the training part. We will go and talk about it, all those steps. Now, now let's come to the actual part where uh, we will talk about, first of all, what basically we are going to cover from the topic standpoint, and then we will deep dive into it in the training features. So this, this particular just slide is talking about one thing that I want to highlight is uh, from the Training perspective, right? If you will see the material wise, you will definitely get most of the materials in trailers for admin as well as the developer. Okay. However, the limitation of trailers are is uh, 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 what, like you just see the theoretical thing and based on that theory, you will do some hands on exercise. But that trailer is not interactive. If you have any questions, doubt, uh, you cannot be able to clear that out. That is number one. Second, you will never get a real-time project implementation experience. Like what is do and don't. As I said in the last slide, I saw right some of the things you can do by through administrator as well as you programmatically as well. Now, though, when you are in a project, what will be the best way? Whether you should go and create, let's say, workflow versus triggers. So those kinds of discussions will definitely you need a, a experience resource or in this in our case a trainer which will help you to make you understand how uh, you are going to face the real time projects. What are the scenarios that you will get in the real time project? In which situation what you should do? So those types of things that definitely uh, uh, we will go and talk about it and that's the particular message of this particular slide that uh, but of course I'm not denying the fact that you should not go uh, and read or or complete trailhead definitely you should do that's an additional add-on uh, which is provided by Salesforce but will it help you to directly after completing trailhead jump into any ongoing or live project might be not Right, so there basically we will help you to make comfortable and whatever the scenario is still date based on my experience that I have, I will try to portray so that you guys can have the uh, the the pre I will say the knowledge and you can you know better uh, work in your project. So let's first come to uh, what we are going to cover. Uh, so first of all, um, it will start with uh, organization setup. And first, I'm talking about what we are going to cover in admin part, OK? And after that, we'll talk about the developer part. So from the admin standpoint, uh, definitely one thing is important is like how you are going to configure your org, right? This is, though it looks like very simple, but in a project, it is not. It has many points as the, uh, uh, based on the customer a local let's say in which uh, country the customer has headquarters what is the currency the corporate currency fiscal year i mean n number of things are there that we have to talk in the organization setup so we'll start with the organization setup where you first configured your org uh, for a project then the next important part once you configured your org right the next thing is the access so that even the developer the testers, administrator, everyone will come and start using the org and start developing the things. So that will definitely encounter as an admin uh, to set up those users in the system. 
okay and then there is other part as a business users what are the things that you have to maintain at the user level record and how you are going to basically deal with those you know real time scenarios of a project while setting up the user how you are going to uh, set up the system during i mean so let's say today is the deployment date and tomorrow is the go live date what is the best way to set up the user i mean uh, should i go and simply load the user then load the data and deploy the entire thing or what would the major majority of the things that i have to take care of it because one small uh, mistake right in the live environment could, could jeopardize the entire you know the client uh, image right one example i can say that let's say you have the existing user in the system in the production and some of workflow which is sending an email alert is inactive and when you deploy something in the system that workflow fire and it unnecessarily send some let's say um coupon voucher let's say there is one coupon voucher email will go to all the customers so so it will be a, either a loss for a company where uh, all company has to send an apology mail that ignore that mail that's a not a valid coupon code i'm just giving you one simple example in the live environment related to user so that will hamper client branding or financial right anyway it will be hampered so those types of scenarios we'll talk about in the user setup <clears throat> then the next part will the security and access this is very important part in terms of certification plus uh, your uh, your interviews when you are whenever you are appearing for an interview and the last of course for the project also as an administrator here you will have the multiple different business scenarios one by one for each object you can you have to deal with the different with different business scenarios so we will talk about those business scenarios during the training we will see uh, how we are means uh, first we'll take some problem statement and then we'll try to you know uh, address it and we'll try to solve uh, uh, during the training itself okay so next we one will be your standard and custom objects here we will talk about all those things which are related to object for an example field data type record type page layouts uh, what is different types of relationships lookup master uh, picklist dependent picklist all those things fls field level security um, uh, all those stuffs here we will talk about it in, in the standard and custom object then uh, uh, just for giving you a high level idea right uh, how your sales and service cloud will work okay so these topics definitely uh, we will go and cover in the detail when you are going on appearing for exam of sales cloud consultant or service cloud consultant however i put it in a system or in a course just to for a two purposes one is of course you should know the flow right account opportunity lead case bare minimum things so that once you are in a project right you are aware of it what is what are those okay uh, and of course if there is any basic questions being asked during uh, when in your interview or in your exam um, that you will you know not feel awkward or you will not say that oh i don't know uh, nothing about it so that's the reason i have added some of the topics from the sales and service cloud then the then it will come for the activity management here we'll talk about how you are going to create tasks events calendars and all then the next is the data management this is also very important from the administrator standpoint basically uh, how we are going to load the data in salesforce <coughs> um, uh, what are the things uh, you can do to maintain the data quality field mappings uh how you are going to do separate uh, dml operations like insert delete update absort all those operations which are the tools which are helpful in order to do all those activities so we'll talk about those things during this part and at the last uh, uh <clears throat> from the reporting standpoint this is also purely a administrative job and uh, we all know that salesforce has a, a capability of creating reports and dashboards where you can definitely meet some of the uh, 
bare minimum requirement i will say so it's a not a too fancy tool to create dashboards and report because if you have to go with that then you have to use bi tools some analytics tools which salesforce also launched as a salesforce web analytics right uh, but however as an admin in the part of sales and service cloud there is a report and dashboards where we will talk about all different types of report for an example matrix report summary report tabular report what is custom report type how you are doing basically what, uh, how we are going to share your report security related to reports and dashboard within the dashboard what are the different components are there so all those things we will talk about it and this is the process automation in the slide which i talked about where you will talk about process builders um, uh, workflows field updates all those things we will talk about in this uh, particular part and at the last in the admin admin uh, uh, certification uh, we will talk about what is app exchange okay uh, where basically uh, what is app exchange marketplace how i will go and install any one of the application in our system if i have to do as a system administrator so that's pretty much from the admin standpoint thanks for watching the video for full course please visit www.igmguru.com and enroll today